I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're here with Michelle Crisp who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us the name of your school and tell us what you teach. Okay, so the name of my school is Main Avenue Elementary and I teach fifth grade. Okay. And I taught fourth grade before um, in second grade, so fifth grade is an interesting grade. Now tell us about how, how critical fifth grade is in preparing students for the big steps, which will be middle school coming up. Absolutely. So within fifth grade, um, there's a lot of social, um, that social component is very key. Um, and the students really are learning how to um, interact with each other and um, different responsibilities, if you will, um, regarding their school and how they function. And I'm trying to build uh, those social skills in addition to the content skills so that when they get ready for junior high, um, they're ready, you know, so they have the social skills down and the, in addition to the content skills. Well, the social skills are so important because that's such a big transition going from elementary to middle school. Mm -hmm. um, how do you emotionally prepare the students? I mean, it's a couple of years away, but you still have to kind of get them ready. Absolutely. So um, what I do is I'm building um, a sense of community in my classroom, and that starts day one. And I'm letting them know um, that they're valued and their actions are valued as well and how they interact with each other because it's a very um, peer oriented, I would say, year where they're really big on um, peer interaction. So um, building that and having that established in my classroom is key. And we do that through um, class. We have like class meetings. Um, we do um, um, lunch bunch where I'll have them come in, a group of them and do lunch bunch and then they all want to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, just building that camaraderie and that community within the class is key with the social skills so that they can take that outside as well. Let's talk about the Robla District, um, mm -hmm. uh, the demographics, the student population and the challenges that you face there. Absolutely. So um, uh, it's primarily um, English learners. And so um, adapting to that is really getting to um, the students to, to communicate, to talk, um, making relationships with the families um, as well, and even the surrounding communities, um, building those relationships so that we have resources uh, for the students both at school and um, off campus is key as well. So. Your district offices offices offers I'm sorry services absolutely unique services for students absolutely too. so there's the after school program um, there's lunch that they get um, there's um, various programs field trips they bring in um, different activities and people to speak to the students so there are a lot of resources that my district mm -hmm. offers. And how do you take advantage of all that to make sure that the students get the most out of, you know, the field trips and the after school? Absolutely. So this year we were able to go to UC Davis to the Madavi Center, which was absolutely amazing. And I jumped on that opportunity for the students to do because I knew that the learning that would take place on field trips are monumental and the students really love it. You know, they love being away. Um, things like that are doing other projects um, around even culture, um, different cultures within my classroom. Um, is very important and powerful as well. And so I always encourage the students um, to take advantage or actually to participate in the activities at the school. So you have office. a multicultural classroom and you absolutely. try to celebrate all the different absolutely. cultures. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we do that, like I said, by um, we do different projects around cultures. Um, and the students absolutely love it because it's, um, it opens up um, a realm of, of learning for the students and for myself about things that we didn't know initially. So I have a very multicultural classroom. So it's educational on many levels. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So what does it mean to you to be named as a Teacher of the Year? Oh, it means the world. Um, uh, it's an honor. Um, in fact, my first year teaching, one of my students nominated me for Teacher of the Year at their um, dentist's office and I won and I thought, wow, you know, that was uh, amazing. Not for the accolade, but the fact that they thought that highly of me. And so for my colleagues and um, the school and district to really honor that for me at this juncture in my life is absolutely amazing. So then with that recognition, now how do you view yourself? Oh, um, I, I, I'm still very humbled and I'm still a work in progress and I still, you know, I'm a learner, but I feel like um, I could use this as a way and a stepping stone to um, just continue learning um, within the within the educational field. Well, there's a lot of professional learning that you go through mm -hmm. as a teacher. How, how do you 
How do you take advantage of all those opportunities? Because there are a lot out there. There are, and yeah. our district does a great job get, you know, providing professional development for us. And I utilize a lot of what's happening. So we do um, a lot of partnership with UC Davis, the SOAR training, um, the SOAR strategies, and just using that and then applying it to my actual teaching practice. Mm -hmm. is, is just an amazing opportunity to have. And, and then you probably have a lot of student teachers coming to your classroom as well, mm -hmm. and, and you have to model good behavior for them. Absolutely. And, and, in and fact, the year before last, I had a student teacher, and it was just amazing to be in that mentor you know, position because I also um, was a student teacher at one point. So absolutely, and for them to be able to shadow me and, and gain you know, hopefully really great uh, teaching practices is, is an amazing opportunity as well. Uh, being a mentor teacher is, is a big opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a big responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot in that because you're, what you're doing is you're, um, you're being a role model, a mentor in that dual relationship to have so that they're watching you and they're learning from you and um, you just acknowledging that and knowing that in addition to the students also. Mm. So uh, what do you do then to motivate your students? Do you have any special special techniques or things that you do to try oh, to get them yes. excited about so, things? Um, we, I really like music. So um, I implement music in my classroom at various, various times because of the different modalities of learning that I'm um, having to teach. That's really key. And then we do a lot of brain breaks where we get up and dance and um, if we need to. And, and then we do, uh, like I said, we do field trips and then a lot of projects. So we're project-based. Uh, it's like a project-based learning in my classroom where they're not just sitting in a, in a seat all the time. We're up learning um, as well. So, Because students learn hands-on. They learn hands-on. Yeah. And I'm a visual learner, and I know I have a lot of visual and kinesthetic you know, student learners. So being able to get up and move and talk and um, all that is very important. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we've looked forward to speaking with you, and, and congratulations to you oh, all on this honor. Thank you so and we've much. been speaking with Michelle Crisp, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Thank you. Thanks very for being much. here. Thank you.